Hi there, and welcome back to our Exam AZ900 Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 37 entitled Resource Locks, and my name is Tim Warner. In the Microsoft Fundamentals AZ900 Objective Domain, we're starting today with the functional group Describe Identity, Governance, Privacy, and Compliance Features. The objective is titled Describe Azure Governance Features, and our specific skill is Describe the Functionality and Usage of Resource Locks. As you see on the right side of this slide, if you point your browser to timw.info forward slash az900sg, you can take a look and download an interactive table of contents for this study guide. Let's proceed. Resource locks in Microsoft Azure are also called management locks. And what you do with these is that you can apply them to the subscription, resource group, or resource scope to prevent unwanted changes. Now, some security colleagues of mine think that resource locks aren't that big of a deal, but I happen to disagree. As you know, human nature can result in inconsistencies, and we want to, in IT, keep our environment as consistent as possible, if for no other reason, to reduce our infrastructure's attack surface, as well as maintain compliance with all of our appropriate regulations. The thing about resource locks that I think is pretty cool is that it can, in fact, help save some inadvertent human error kind of things like accidental modifications or deletions. And by default, they do affect all users in all roles. So even as a subscription owner, you will be subject to the lock. And I'll demonstrate all of this in the upcoming demo. You should know, and I've told you this in previous episodes, that resource locks are inheritable, which is to say if you apply the lock at, say, the subscription level, that lock will flow down by inheritance to all resource groups and resources enclosed in the subscription. That's actually a warning because you don't want to be too aggressive with your locks or you're going to create a denial of service and your administrators and developers may not be able to do what they actually need to do and have authorization to do otherwise for those resources. Some more information on resource locks. There's two types. One is delete, which just prevents the delete operation, and read only, which is a much stricter lock that prohibits any modification at all. Why would you want to do this? Well, perhaps you've got a virtual network topology laid out with an address space and with subnet ranges all to your liking, and you want to make sure that none of your colleagues make any modifications to that virtual network. In that case, that would be a good candidate for applying a read-only resource lock. You also by contrast, might have a virtual machine that's running a production service, and you want to make sure that your administrators and developers can get into the virtual machine resource, not just logging into the guest OS, but actually make modifications to the VM's configuration, but not delete it. In that case, you might want to protect that virtual machine by associating a delete lock with that resource. Now, here's why I think that locks are more powerful than some of my security colleagues might think. You actually need very high privileges to create or delete management locks. Owner, as you might remember from previous episodes, is the highest privilege role in your Azure subscriptions. User Access Administrator is an Azure AD role that's given by Microsoft Azure for special use cases. For instance, if you find that you're locked out of a subscription, you can elevate yourself if you're an Azure Active Directory Global Administrator by requesting that Azure give you User Access Administrator role membership. Either way, Owner and User Access Administrator are top-tier roles. Now, in this demonstration, I'm going to give you the basics of using resource locks or management locks in Microsoft Azure. If you look in the upper right corner, I'm actually going to want to switch my account context here to my Tim at timw.info account because I know that this account is an owner of my subscription. And let me head on over here on my shortcuts menu down to resource groups. And let's do a lock on my Tim resource group. Let's say that we've got a use case where we want to prevent the delete operation from affecting any of the resources that are in this resource group. You see that I have quite a list. Again, as usual, it doesn't matter specifically what's in there. I'm just teaching you the general trend. So what we can do is at the resource group scope, and this would also work at the resource scope as well as the subscription scope, is look in the settings for locks. This will show any existing locks on the scope. There are none. If there's a lock that's been inherited from the subscription level, we can jump up to the subscription scope by using the subscription button. Let's click Add, and I'm going to call this Tim 
delete lock. For lock type, as I said, there's read only, which is a very aggressive lock. You can't make any changes at all to the resource, or you could just protect it against a deletion. That's what I'm actually gonna do here. So let me set that change, and now we can see my lock exists on the resource group. Now notice that the delete and edit links are both active. That's because I have owner permissions at this scope. We're gonna work with a fictional user account in just a second, the Melissa Gunn account that I've used in previous lessons. And if I switch over to access control I am and on the check access page look her up we can verify that right now she has contributor coming down inherited from the subscription and that should mean that that contributor access flows down to all resources inside this resource group we can sanity check that of course at least from the lock perspective let's go to this Azure automation account that I have in my Tim resource group and again let's look up locks and sure enough, we see the delete lock here, but notice that it says parent resource locks can't be edited here. Some things that I need you to understand, especially if you plan on going beyond Azure fundamentals and you're looking at, say, the Azure administrator or Azure security engineer skill sets and certifications, is that while locks do flow by inheritance, you cannot edit the lock at the child level, and that can present a governance problem. Let's actually, let me show you that in more detail. Let me switch my context over to Melissa, and let's see, we'll probably have to log her out and log her back in to refresh her access token. So let's take care of that quickly. I've got her account cached in my browser. So it'll be just a moment. Yeah, we're going to stay signed in. And let's head on over to resource groups. First of all, we know that because she is a contributor, she has access to this Tim resource group. So we'll come on in here and let's take a look at the resources. Particularly, let's see if I can find something like a stray storage account or something that if I do delete it, it probably isn't that big of a deal. Let's say Melissa, for whatever reason, wants to delete, let's say this public IP address, timvnet001. Actually, I don't want to do that either. How about <laughs> Tim Storage 001 Let's pick on that. Now, of course, we shouldn't be able to delete it, so I don't know why. I guess it's just habit that I'm a little bit nervous here. Well, let's go ahead and hit delete. And fortunately, Azure Resource Manager catches this and says that can't delete because the resource or its parent has a delete lock. Locks must be removed before this resource can be deleted. Okay, so you might think, well, let's come out of here and in the context of the storage account, let's find the lock setting. And even though Melissa is a contributor, which is the second most powerful built-in Azure resource role, she still doesn't have the permission to edit or remove the lock. Isn't that something? So if we come back to my management scope here, my Tim account that is an owner and does have permissions on this entire scope, even I am gonna be subject to this rule. Let me try to delete this automation account by browsing to it and hitting delete. Are you say, are you sure you wanna do this? And if I click yes, it says the account could not be deleted. I'm a little disappointed that Azure is not giving us additional details. Specifically, it's the lock that's causing the problem here. And again, the rule about child locks and parent locks is still in place. The idea is if I really do wanna delete this automation account, I have to go to the parent scope and either edit or delete the lock to free up the resource. So if you're looking at a trend here, the trend is these management locks, you'll probably have to modify them over time in order to accomplish these kind of use cases. I hope that makes some semblance of sense for you. For learning resources, go to timw.info forward slash RLO1 for resource lock basics. If you're deeper or beyond, say, the Azure fundamental skill set and you want to understand how these locks are defined in the Azure Resource Manager REST API definition, go to timw.info forward slash RLO2. I want to make sure that regardless of whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or expert level professional in Azure, I've got something interesting for you. And then lastly, we have locks with Azure Blueprints. You might be thinking, Tim, what are Azure Blueprints? This timw.info forward slash RLO3 is a teaser because we're going to be covering Azure Blueprints in an upcoming episode. Might as well get up to speed before to do some pre-reading. 
Thanks very much. Another episode down. Congratulations. Our next episode stays with the theme of Azure governance and will cover taxonomic tags. My Twitter handle is TechTrainerTim. All of my site courses are at timw.info forward slash ps, and my website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks again. Happy studying, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.